Okay. All right. You can see this now. All right. So, so let me just back up since I just didn't do the recording. So, so we've already, we've already covered the assembly language for loop. We did that on Saturday. And then now we're going to do exchange the contents of two locations in RAM. And then if we have time, we'll pull on a bit and we'll do, and we'll configure a special function register. If not, I'll do those. Uh, I was going to do a, another session tomorrow. All right. So anyway, so the first things we have to do when we want to exchange two variables is we have to create the variables. So we have to have the location set up. We have to preload some values in the variables that we're going to exchange. And then we have to do the exchange. And we don't have, we obviously do this up in the beginning and the, before the program really starts. We can do this anywhere at the beginning of the program. And then when we want to do the exchange, we can do the exchange. So they don't have to be done in the same place in the program. In fact, probably wouldn't be. All right, so for defining the variables, we'll do a C block, define it to start at hex 30, and we'll create X, X, Y, Y, and Z, Z, which will effectively assign 30 to hex, 31 to Y, and 32 to Z. We don't have to write these values in. The C block automatically does that. And then we do the end C block. Remember that our values that we can store can only vary from zero to 255 unsigned, or if we, if we want to use signed, they can vary from minus 128 to plus 127. But we as the programmer have to remember whether they're signed or unsigned, and then treat them appropriately. Um, but if we do signed values, then then we can add plus and minus values. But we just have to we just have to treat uh, the carry bit differently. In signed, we we ignore the carry bit. In unsigned, the carry bit tells us if we've overflowed. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is bank cell xx. Since all of these are in the same bank, which is bank zero, then then we're going to then we're going to just use bank cell xx anytime we need to access any xx, y, y, or zz. Oh, and the reason we have to do zz is because uh, the letter z is a reserved symbol in assembler. It stands for the, the zero bit in the status word. And so we can't use z by itself. We have to do zz if we're going to use z for a variable. So that's why I did it. I don't know. It's probably, I probably should do something different. But anyway, so. We only have to do one bank cell though, because all three of these are in the same bank. Now, if somebody went back and changed these locations, then that could cause problems. So we, we probably should make a note, you know, leave all, leave all the variables in the same bank unless you wanted to have to modify the bank cells in the code or something like that. Just to, you know, if this were gonna be a program that was gonna be around for a long time and it had to be maintained, you'd probably wanna put that line in there. So, so somebody maintaining the code would not screw around with the the fact they're all in the same bank. Okay, so first we're going to put 26 in X and 35 in Y. And remember, we have to we have to observe these limits. We can't go over unsigned 0 to 255. All right, so bank cell XX, that creates this MOVLB instruction with 0 because that's, that's the bank they're in. But the compiler does that for us, so we don't have to worry about this. And then once we bank cell XX, then we'll say MOVLB, and we'll put 26 in and uh, hex 26 in this case, and then we'll move W to F XX. We don't need any other operands because this instruction always moves to W. This instruction always moves to F. So you don't have to specify W or F with that single bit second operand. All right, and then we're gonna move MOV LW to zero X 35. And again, there are, YY is in the same bank as XX, so we don't have to bank cell again. And now we'll just move W to F, YY. And that puts 35 in Y. This puts 26 in X, 35 in Y. But we don't put it directly there. First, we put it in W. So this basically goes to W and then to XX. And this basically goes to W and then to YY. We don't screw around with Z because we don't need to. And uh, because uh, Z is going to get overwritten. So what's in there now is just random. We don't care. All right. Now, someplace else in the code, we want to exchange these values. So again, we'd have to do a bank cell because we don't know what bank we might be set to at this point. And again, I could bank cell XX or ZZ or YY. They're all in the same bank. It doesn't really matter. But I'll bank cell XX again. And again, it'll create a MOVLB instruction automatically for me to zero. And that'll put zero in the BSR. All right, but we don't need to know that. And 
unless you look at a disassembled listing or the actual code, you won't see that. You'll just see the bank cell. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do, we'll take, we'll move X to Y. But, but or, sorry, we'll we'll move X, we'll save X, and then we'll move Y to X. So let's so let's first M O V F X X comma W. Now here we do need the second operand because when we do the MOV instruction, we have to specify whether we're just testing for zero, in which case we'll leave it in F, or whether we want to move it to W. Now, when we move the contents of X into W, then our XX register equals 26. Now W gets assigned to 26, but X is still 26, and YY is still 35. And again, these are hex values. And, and ZZ, we don't know, it's got junk in it. All right, and then then now that it's in W, what we're going to do is we're going to M O V W to F Z Z. Again, we don't have to put a second operand here, and it's going to put now it's going to put in the Z Z is going to get uh, the the twenty six is going into Z Z. Then now we can go ahead and M O V F Y Y comma W. Y, Y comma W, and then we can M, O, V, W to F, X, X. Now the value that, that was in Y, which is 35, it's still in Y, but it's also in W, and now we also put it in X. But we have saved the value in X and in Z, Z, so we're good. And now all we have to do is move F, Z, Z, comma, W, and M, O, V, W, F into uh, y, y. And we're done. All right, so that's, that's how we, that's how we uh, move a value from uh, x into y and the value from y into x without destroying either one, but we use our scratch pad z to do it. Now there is a way to do it with uh, exclusive ORs without having to use a scratch, scratch pad register, but uh, that's more, that's more yeah, tricky programming that we don't, it's probably not even a good idea to do it that way unless you comment it effectively so you tell people what you're doing. All right, so let's, uh, let's so then that takes care of exchange of contents of two variables. Now let's pull on a bit, okay? So pull on a bit. So let's, let's pull on the push button since you guys have done that. So we, we, know, that, we know that the push button is RB7. Now, as part of this, we, may, we have to configure this push button to be an input. So let's look at how we configure a GPIO pin. So, so, we'll, also, so we'll also config GPIO, and then we'll pull on a bit. All right, so first to configure it. So there's, there's a couple things we should do. First, we we should do uh, so first we should we should bank cell tris b bank cell all one word tris b oh, just do good okay and then then what we should do is we we can we can we want to make it an input so inputs are one and zeros are outputs. It's easy to remember because of the first letter of input and the first letter of output. So we want to make it a one. Now, by definition, by default, it already is a one, but that's okay. We're going to do this anyway, just in case. So, so I'm going to go ahead here and I'm, I'm going to use the bit set instruction because it's really a nice handy instruction. Bit set F tris B comma seven. So that makes bit seven a one. Doesn't change any other bits, which is nice, but they, by default, they start off after reset or when you power up, they start off as ones. All right, bit set F. And then uh, now we're gonna make sure that the Ansel register is set for digital function. Now, there turns out there's not an analog function for, for pin seven of, the, of, uh, of port B. So we really don't have to do this either. 
by default, it will be, it will already, it, it doesn't exist. So it will always be uh, set for digital function, but just, it's a good practice to do it in case we wanted to port the code to, to another chip that might actually have an analog function on this pin. So uh, in the same family, say. So now what we're gonna do is, uh, since we're bank cell for Tris B, we need to bank cell for N cell B. And then we need to bit clear F A N S E L B seven. So that makes sure that it's set for digital function. And then, so that takes care of that. And then the only other thing maybe we probably should do is do is bank cell latch A or latch B rather, and then bit clear F become a seven. Although probably don't really need to do that. So it turns out we can actually get by without doing any of that, um, but it wouldn't be good programming practice. It's probably good to, to do this. Remember our latch is always for writing out. It's sending, it's for outputs, not for input. And then now what we would do, let's, we could do this somewhere in the beginning setup part of the program. And then somewhere in our loop, we would be pulling on the bit. So we'll call that, um, we'll call this check check PB. So that's our label. It this starts in column one. So the only, only label should start in column one. So we put that in column one. And then our, our instruction, which we don't have to put on the same line, but it, but, but it effectively is um, if we just write it down here. And so what we would do, we would bit, uh, well, uh, so check PB. So before we go into this loop, before this, we should go ahead and do a bank cell. Bank cell uh, uh, port B. And then what we would do is we'd bit test, bit test F skip, uh, uh, in this case, we want to skip uh, clear, uh, clear. So because the, uh, when, when the, so we'll put a little comment here. When, when push button is pushed, R B seven equals zero and not pushed RB7 equals one. So, so we want to test a bit and if it's set, then we want to, then, uh, sorry, if it's test bit F skip clear. So if it's zero, we want to skip, but if it's set, we wouldn't skip. So then what we would do here is we would branch always to check PB. So what happens then is, and then in this myth test F skip clear instruction, we have to do port B comma seven. So it's gonna to go to port B, it's gonna look at pins at, at pin the uh, bit seven in that port. And if it's clear, it's gonna skip, but if, if it's not pushed, it won't be clear. So this is gonna wait and, and, and it won't skip because it will be set and so it'll branch back here. So it's just gonna stay in this tight loop and go round and round and round checking that bit. And when the bit is, uh, when the bit is finally set, uh, cleared, it'll drop through to the next code. All right, so that's how that works. Any questions about that one? And then finally, uh, will configure a special function register. Now, this is really somewhat complicated, not so much because it's hard to do, but just because it's easy to, uh, it's easy to uh, get confused. So um, let's, let's go to the data sheet, which I think I left up. Let's see if I did. Yeah, 
So we'll bring we'll bring this over here. Okay, so here's my data sheet. And then let's go down. Oh, let's see. Let's do the uh, let's do the A to D converter just for grins. Oh, um, you're not sharing the screen. Oh, you're not seeing that now? No, I'm seeing the paper. Oh, you still? Oh, I key. I did a. I did. Okay, I didn't do that right. Yeah, let me stop share then. I didn't share the monitor, but I'll fix it. Uh, let's see, screen three. Okay. Yeah. So, so here's the uh, here's the so here's the the uh, the we'll 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 do the analog to digital converter, and I I usually start below and back into it just because it gets us to the register I want to look at. So let's set up the um, let's set up the uh, the uh, analog to digital converter control register zero and then maybe we'll do register one two we'll do both of these. Okay so here's here's the the AD con zero. Now because this is because it, this is you know because this is sort of an the processor is eight bits and all of our well Pretty much all our registers are eight bits, although uh, in, on the program memory, everything's 14 bits. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, and a few things are over there, like the configuration words are over there and they're all 14 bits. But most of our modules have control registers and they're almost always have up to eight bits. Although in this case, bit seven is unimplemented. So it's really only six bits that are actually implemented. And there's three fields in this register. The first field is the channel select register, analog channel select, uh, and it's it it has five bits, and it goes from bit uh, so this bit zero one so bit two three four five and six are the five bits of channel select, and here's what there's what you can choose, zero 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 is analog zero, and so forth all the way up to analog eleven. And then, uh, then, then down here, one 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 zero one is our internal temperature sensor. One 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 zero is our uh, digital analog converter output, and then our fixed voltage reference is one 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 one, and you can actually a to d those values and read them, even though they're internal modules, you, they're, they can be connected internally. To the ADD converter, and you can actually see you can verify what they're what they're, if they're putting out what they're supposed to be. Or in the case of the temperature sensor, you can actually read the what the what the temperature sensors is is indicating. And I think we'll do that in one of the labs. We will also use the analog module, which has a temperature sensor on it. Okay. So anyway, uh, so we want to set in this case we want one of the analog channels. Now the question is which analog channel? Well. It turns out on your board, uh, you've got a few channels, and and uh, and if you look at um, if you look at these channels on on your little thing, you can see here's your analog header right there. And if we get this, if we get this right on here, you should be able to see the printing there. It's a little hard to see, but but this analog input is RC2, RC3, and, uh, and uh, I can't even see it, and RB5. So RC2, RC3, and RB5. And they're labeled AN. Let's see if I can actually get this closer. You know. Yeah, so you can see. So they're labeled RC2 is AN6, RC3 is AN7, and RB5 is AN11. So we're actually dealing with uh, AN6, uh, 7, R11. So it turns out the pot's on 11. So we'll set it up for the pot just for grins. And uh, so if we wanted to do that, then what we would have to do, let's see. Yeah, so we'll set it up for the pot. And uh, so if we look at then, uh, let's see, we'll make this come back here. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted, I wanted this one. Okay, if we make it come up here, then 
uh, you can see, so if we wanted to do the uh, AN6, we'd, we'd put in 00110 in this field. If we want to do AN7, but it, we're going to do AN11. And so AN11 is 0100. So what I normally do then is, uh, is I normally uh, just go ahead and draw a little box here because this really keeps me out of trouble. And we'll say this is ADCON0. And so we have This is bit zero and this is bit seven. And we know this bit is nothing, so we'll just put a zero there. And then this is the go done bit, which must be a zero. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then this is just your AD on, which has to be a one. So I want to put the channel in here. I want to put in A and 11. So let's see. So A and 11, again, is going to be zero, one, zero, one, one. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then I'll cover these other two things, which I didn't explain. OK, then the go done bit. So it's the AD conversion status bit. AD conversion cycle in progress. Setting this bit starts an AD conversion cycle. This bit is automatically cleared by hardware when the AD conversion cycle has completed. So 0 says AD conversion cycle completed, and, or it's not in progress. And then finally, ADC enable bit. One, ADC is enabled. Zero, ADC is disabled and consumes no operating current. So, so what it tells you down here, uh, it gives you a little note on this bit, uh, on one of these, I think. Uh, well, it didn't here. But in the text, it tells you that you cannot change the channel and set the go done bit at the same time. So you must first change the channel then you have to wait a little bit, and then you can set the go down bit. Because when you first change the channel, you're you're changing, and I, we'll talk about this when we cover the A to D converter. But you're you're connecting the sample and hold capacitor in the A to D converter to a new input, and you have to give it just a few, uh, you know, maybe a microsecond for it to charge up, so it's tracking the voltage that it's now seeing. And if you if you start the conversion, it the first thing it does when it starts the conversion is it disconnects the sampling capacitor from the input so that the value doesn't change while you're trying to do the conversion. And then it starts the conversion process and it takes 13 cycles of the conversion clock to get it converted. And so in that time, clearly uh, a signal changing quickly would be changing. So you'd, you'd actually be chasing it all the way through. It'd be ridiculous. It just wouldn't work very well. So, they, so you must wait just a few, uh, maybe a microsecond or two before you start the conversion. And uh, so you can't write the, you can't write the, uh, the channel number and the conversion at the same time. And then of course you have to have the A to D converter on for it to do anything. So, oops, let's see. Um, oops, where's my thing? Here it is. Okay, so here's my, here's my, uh, so here's my field. So, so this is, this turns on the AD on, this is go done. go done bit. And then this is my channel here. So the channel is set for, for A and 11. And then I put a zero in this unused field. I could put a one there. It doesn't matter, but it's usually is easier to do zeros. Now I just have to figure out, okay, how do I get these values into that location, which is AD con zero. And the reason I can use AD con zero is because I have a header file that has all these register locations all reassigned. Now, if, if I didn't want to use my header file, which I'd be an idiot because it makes things a lot easier. Uh, sorry. What I, what I would do, I'd go back into my data sheet and I'd go down, I'd go in here and I see in my chip, because it varies by chip, uh, where, where that actually is in memory. And the only way to do that, well, the only way I know to do that is to go down here where you see the assignments. So I'm looking for 80 con zero. Where is 80 con zero? So here are all my special function registers. And oops, look, there is 80 con zero right there. It happens to have an address of 09D hex. So I could just write, I could also write 09D 
base 16. I could write 09D or well 0x, 0x, 09D. I could write that in instead of 80 con 0, but it's a lot easier to write 80 con 0 because then I can read my code and I know what it's set, what it's trying to do. But the compiler, the assembler, automatically goes in and substitutes 0x, 090 for 80 con 0 into my instruction. And it'll only put in the lower the lower seven bits. And it turns out since it's in bank one, that the there is a the upper five bits are zero 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 one. The lower seven bits then would be actually uh, one D. So so anyway, so now so so what I do when I want to set this up, I first want to figure out what I have to write in there. Well, I can do it several different ways. I could do a bunch of bit set instructions and I could bet, sit bet, set bit six, four, three, and zero. But that'd take one, two, three, four instructions to do it. So it's easier just to do it all at once. So if I do it all at once, I normally just figure out what this is in hex. Well, one, two, three, four. So I know my eight bits is always gonna be two hex digits. This one will be a two. And this one will be one, one, zero, one, which is gonna be D. So I have to write two D 0x, so this translates into 0x2d, and that's the value I have to put in to 80 con 0, which happens to be in 0x09d. All right, so you can see why it's really handy to use these abbreviations. And I could even give this a name if I wanted. I could do pound define, and I could call this ad0val. Oh, professor. Yeah. Oh, you can't see it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me fix that. Yeah. So, so here, so, so what I do is I divide this word into two bytes, two nibbles rather. So this is zero zero one zero, and this is one one zero one. So this is two in hex, and this is d in hex. So that gives me zero x two d is the value that's got to go into the eighty con zero location, which happens to be at zero x zero nine d. Okay. But I could give this one a name too. I could, what I could do is I could do pound define. Uh, uh, a D zero val. And I could call that zero X two D. And then now I could use this instead of zero X two D, which would, I don't know, it would kind of tell me that's the, that's the, that's the configuration. And I could even give it a much more complicated name like like uh, like uh, a d uh, a uh, uh, sorry like a n eleven underscore uh, go go uh, go done uh, off underscore uh, a d on. So then I could look at that and I could see, okay, then that means A and 11 don't set the go down bit and 80 on. But I probably wouldn't do that. So probably what I do is just, is just I just go ahead and use 0x2d. So down here where I wanna configure this register, what I would actually do then, I would actually do MOV LW, uh, well, I bank cell, bank cell, A, D, C, O, N, zero, and then move M O V L W to uh, zero X two D, and then I would M O V W F A D C O N zero, and that would that would configure that register so it would have these values in. That's the process you have to go through to figure this out. You have to look at your data sheet and see, go to where the register is defined. And um, in this case, uh, it was down here in the 80 con. Uh, con zero register. And you have to look at this and figure out what values have to go in there. And then you have to translate that into a hex value. And then you have to write that in. That's how you configure a register. Okay, so 
So I think we have, I think we've, we've kind of covered all these things. I'll probably go back through these one more time on Tuesday. I'll try and set up a little Zoom time. I think, I don't remember what I said it at, maybe noon. Um, do you know off the top of your head? Yes, sir. I believe it's at noon. Okay. So I'll, uh, so noon tomorrow, I'll kind of repeat some of this. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. I will post it. I, I probably can't post it now because I got I got have another appointment or one I got to leave and go to. Um,